All right, back again, 4.3, the unit circle, or the circular functions, really. Um, two big things happening today. We're going to be looking at the circle, which is a good thing, and we're going to learn a hand trick. The hand trick's going to have to come in class because it's more of a visual thing, but it's a way to evaluate trig functions of our special angles really quickly, actually. Um, you can ask calculus people that I've taught before they they all know this trick or at least they used to know it they might have forgot it by now but all right so here we go looking at angles first of all I mean, some of you are like um, why are we looking at angles we have to define how angles are read and looked at so we have some angle sitting here we have an initial side where we measure from, and then we have a terminal side. Now, these are just angles themselves. This is how all angles are. But in trigonometry, we like to look at angles in standard position. The initial side for a standard position angle is on the positive x-axis. And the terminal side obviously comes from the initial side. So this is a standard position angle down here in the bottom right in here. This is the initial side on the positive x-axis. Here's theta. We're measuring from the initial side to the terminal side. It's very important because we're going to use this to help us solve trig problems. So we are now also going to be looking at two different types of angles. The first one being positive. And from the initial side, from the initial side, this is measured counterclockwise. So this is a normal, this direction here is a normal positive theta. Well, you might, you might guess that negative angles means measured the other direction. So negative angles are measured this way. So if we said that this angle was, oh, let's call it 60 degrees positive, well, you can think about, well, it's 360 degrees to get all the way around. So this could also be called a negative 300 degree angle. And you notice they're actually the same angle. They have the same terminal side. This is coming up in just a second here as a definition for that. All right, so we could have positive and we can have ne negative angles. And here's what I was just talking about. They share a terminal angle. So these are angles that are in standard position that share terminal sides. So those two angles that I just mentioned back there, positive 60 and negative 300, are coterminal angles. And there are infinitely many coterminal angles to a single angle. We can just keep adding 360 or subtracting 360 to get back to that angle, to that term, terminal side. So I can name two coterminal angles to each of these things. So if you think about this right in here, here's 30 degrees. I could go the opposite direction to get the negative angle. So I could say it was negative 330 degrees. Oops, not 333. 330 degrees. Or I could just add 360 to this. So I could go to 30 and then I could go all the way around again and I can get 390. Well, and then just add 360 again and again and again. And notice how why I said only two, because we could go forever here. Maybe you pause and get a couple angles here for yourself, but we could do this for negative 150. Negative 150 is right in here, measured this direction. And we could go in the other direction. So this is 180, and then there's 30 degrees to get back to this 50. So it's 210 degrees as a positive angle. Or we could just get a negative, another negative. So we go this direction negative, and we go a 360 degrees more negative. So I get negative 510. All right, so what about radians? Can we do this for radians? Of course, radian measures are still angles. Pi thirds is right about here. 
and we could go the other direction. Now, you have to think about how many things, how many thirds are in 2 pi. Well, you need to know one rotation is 2 pi. That we learned the other day. So if we were to go in thirds, that would be 6 pi thirds. So if I went in the negative direction, it would be negative 5 pi thirds. Or if I just went in the positive direction again by adding 360 or adding 2 pi, I would get 7 pi thirds. So notice we could just basically subtract 360 or add 360 to get to these numbers. Or add 2 pi or subtract 2 pi from the numbers to get coterminal angles. And we could just do this infinitely. So we're going to let theta be an acute angle in standard position whose terminal side contains the point four, 5, 3, and I want to find sine, cosine, and tangent. So we have some angle. It's in quadrant 1 nicely for us right now. We're, we'll get out of quadrant 1 here in a little bit. So the terminal side of the angle theta contains the point 5, 3. Now what you'll notice we do a lot of in trig is we start drawing lines that don't actually exist but they're there to help us. We can draw that altitude back and create a right angle, which means then we have right triangle trig. Now, here's the thing. You have to understand what this 5 and this 3 mean. This 5 means we move in the x direction, which means the length of this side of the triangle is 5. Then we move up 3 units, which means the side of this triangle is 3 which means we can solve for this piece as being the square root of 25 plus 9, which is 34. And now we can do the sine of that theta. Notice it just came from a point out in quadrant 1. We could do this in all quadrants too. If you're thinking ahead, you can do this in all quadrants. You just might get some negative numbers, which is okay. So sine of theta is going to be... 3 over radical 34, which is actually 3 root 34 over 34. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So 5 over radical 34, which is actually equal to 5 root 34 over 34. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent, so 3 fifths. All right, so you'll notice that all we did was had a point in quadrant one, and we could create the sine, cosine, and tangent of all of these, or of this particular theta. Oops, forgot I drew my own picture here. <laughs> oh, I wish I would have paid attention to that. Okay, so you obviously just redrew my own picture. Okay, we could now do trig functions of any angle, and that's really what we're trying to get to here. Notice, I remember I said something about you could pick a point in any quadrant, you would just start getting negative numbers, and that's actually okay. If theta is an angle in standard position, we let x, y be some point on the terminal side and let r denote the distance. So r is kind of like radius. Now remember I said something about circle earlier. We're going to let r be that distance from the origin to the point x, y. And look at that. Uh, now I remember I had a picture. Okay, so notice I just randomly chose quadrant 2. It doesn't matter where this xy was. I could have had xy in quadrant 1, quadrant 4, quadrant 2. The reason I don't do quadrant 1 is because I don't want you guys to get confused and think that only things in quadrant 1 work. Okay, This works for every quadrant. And what we would have figured out is if we created this right triangle here. Oops, I'm on my eraser. If we would have created this right triangle we would have had x direction, y direction, r direction. And then if theta was here, we could actually figure out sine of theta, cosine theta, and everything from these six pieces of information. So sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, tangents y over x. And you don't even need to draw these pictures anymore. You can just figure out from the x, y coordinate. 
And one of the big things that we like to figure out is when r equals 1. So that idea of what we call a unit circle. When r equals 1, notice what happens to all of these fractions. Very interesting. So I'm going to have this sketched up here for now, but you guys are going to get a blank one of these in um, the next class period where we're going to fill this out. All right, so I'm going to start by just looking at quadrant one, and what I'm looking at are these angles here. And on the dashed lines, I'm going to put in all the degree measures. So our special angles are 30, 45, 60, 90, and 0. Okay. Notice there's another dashed line here because 0 is the same thing as 360. Now, radians, this is 0 radians, which is the same thing as 2 pi. 30 degrees is the same thing as pi over 6. 45 degrees is the same thing as pi over 4. Four. I hope these are starting to come to you guys a li little bit quicker now. Pi or 60 degrees is pi thirds, and 90 degrees is pi halves. Now, I might be jumping the gun here for what I actually want to do, but if you think about the radius being 1, it's really important to understand if the radius is 1 and we go back to this previous page that means sine equals the y coordinate and cosine equals the x coordinate because r is both 1 here which means we know that the sine of 30 is 1 half which means this is 1 half and the cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. If we do the same thing for the 45 degree angle, root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2 is what we got from the other day on our table for the sine and cosine of 45 degrees. And then we continue this to the 60. Oops. Now we don't know 0 and 90 just yet, but I'll we'll teach you guys the hand trick for this in a minute. Actually, you guys might even think about it. If the radius is 1, I don't even need to know this. If the radius is 1, that, that point is just the point 1, 0. And likewise, this is just the point 0, 1. All right. Now, the reason this circle comes in handy is because if I just asked you, hey, what's the sine of 45 degrees? The sine of 45 degrees is the y coordinate on the unit circle. And therefore, sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Now, this is handy. It kind of becomes a crutch too much, and I actually want you guys to start memorizing this stuff. Sine of 45 being root 2 over 2. Okay. What we're going to do in the next class session, we're actually going to fill out the rest of the circle. So we're going to have quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4 filled out. Lots of information is going to go on this unit circle, so much that people sometimes laminate these things because they don't want to lose them in next in subsequent years okay so we'll fill out the unit circle when you get to class the next period there's a slight change on the assignment sheet I want you guys to do page 383 1 through 24 all this the do to me problems are still the same and this is section 4.3 a by the way okay so it's the first half of 4.3 all right I hope you guys learned a little bit Come back for the next lesson. We'll learn a lot.